cast your mind back to your school days. You're trudging through North Wales on Mr Atkinson's geography field trip, and despite lots of riveting lectures on orographic rainfall and oxbow rivers, your mind is wandering. Wondering what your dream car will be like in real life. For me, it would have a big, loud engine with a crazy ironing board sized spoiler, yet it would still be small and nimble and usable every day so that my mum could drive me to school in it. Sadly though, in today's world of politics, CO2 targets and three ton SUVs, the dream car recipe is one that rarely comes to fruition. But on the once in a blue moon occasion that it does, it needs to be celebrated. Welcome to the dream car, the Porsche 718 Cayman GT4 RS, otherwise known as the car that we didn't think Porsche would ever build. And why did we think that? Well, there's always been a suspicion since the Cayman came out that if it was given the same sort of hardware as the 911, it could be perhaps even better. But obviously, they were never going to do that. However, you know those conversations that you have with your other half or your mates, the ones where they're trying to convince you to do something, to go somewhere, and you don't want to do it. But they keep asking and asking. And eventually, one day, they ask you when you get in from work and you're tired and you just want to go to bed. So you think, do you know what? Just do it. Just do it. I'll do it. Whatever. Fine. Well, I guarantee that that conversation was had somewhere in Stuttgart, and the result is this thing. A track-focused take on the Cayman sports car, the GT4 RS takes all the knowledge and learnings from years of 911 RS models and applies them to a smaller mid-engine package. Squeezing that 4-litre flat 6 into the depths of the Cayman can't have been easy, and indeed the longer exhausts make for a marginal drop in power, but the results are unquestionably worth it. From the outside, this might sound like a regular Cayman GT4, but in here, it's a whole different story. You've got air intakes replacing the rear side windows, so what you get is a massive hit of pure induction noise straight into your ears. And, well, have a listen. There's also huge downforce upgrades to improve lap time, while spring and damper rates are stiffened to match far more exotic supercars. It may have nicked its big brother's engine, yet the GT4 RS has its eyes set on far more than settling family feuds. You've got to say, fair play to Porsche, because you can probably appreciate that having thrown everything at this car like it feels that they have, it's a bit difficult politically when you think of the 911 GT3 and where it leaves that because this is utterly, utterly spectacular. And many people may think, do I really need the Halo car? Well, I won't answer that question now. But the upside of this is that we've got to see one of the best sports car chassis teamed with perhaps the greatest engine on sale today is like. And the result is, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty great. In summary, it's utterly, utterly awesome. And I genuinely can't think what more you could want from your Porsche. Seriously. Wait, what? This is the holy grail, a 997 
GT3 RS 4 litre. They only made 600 of them. I've never actually seen one in the flesh, let alone got the chance to drive it. It's got a carbon front bumper and bonnet from the GT2 RS. It's got the upgraded aero pack with that massive rear wing and these little flicks, as they call them, on the front bumper. And check out the decals as well. On anything else, it wouldn't look right, but on a GT3, it just works, doesn't it? This isn't simply a regular GT3 RS with a bored out engine. This is one of the all time greats. Built as a celebration of the 911 GT3's formidable success on track, the 4-litre was, at launch, the largest displacement 911 engine ever and took its crankshaft straight from the GT3 RSR racing car. It also had forged piston connecting rods made from titanium and a Nürburgring lap time that, at 7 minutes 27 seconds, even today, ranks among the finest supercars. You simply cannot have a conversation about the best Porsche without including this. Now, there's many places that I could start with this car, but I reckon the engine seems about as good as any. It's a 4-litre flat 6 that develops 493 brake horsepower which is up 50 brake horsepower on the regular GT3, the 3.8 litre version, and it's also up 22 pounds foot of torque. And there's two things that that does. The first is that you can pretty much leave it in third or fourth gear and you can go from very slow, considered hairpins to big, long straights, and you don't need to touch the gear lever. There's so much flexibility, there's so much torque, it's just all over the rev range. You couldn't do that in the 3.8, you had to work the engine hard, you had to work the gearbox hard, and in this, no you don't. Leave it in third, and off you go. However, you don't want to skimp on the down changes because the real benefit comes when you stir the six-speed manual and give the engine a chance to sing its high notes. Max power doesn't arrive until 8,250 RPM, and even then you can still hold on for another few hundred revs. The result is so unashamedly angry that even the sleeping dragons of the North Welsh mountains would think twice about stirring the devil within. Fourth, third, second, each gear change requiring a deft blip of the loud pedal. You'll probably find that your efforts are rarely perfect in timing or weight, yet the prospect of a flawless change is enough to bring you back for more and more and more honing your technique each and every time. And here's another thing, just because this car isn't brand new, it doesn't mean it can't keep up with the modern stuff when the road straightens out. It's lighter at 1,360 kilograms than the current 911 GT3, but it's only got a tiny bit less power, so it gives you every bit the kick in the back. It feels just as quick. Actually, you know what? <laughs> I think it feels quicker. I really do. Ooh. <laughs> Ah, oh, deep breath. For once with a naturally aspirated 4 litre though, it's not the engine that takes centre stage. Of course, it's undeniably spectacular, but the steering, suspension and outright stability, they steal the show. Look carefully and you will get a touch of understeer into tighter corners where the engineless nose is unweighted but as soon as the front end bites, the rear will follow. Whether that's carving the same line or one that steps out wider, the GT3 RS is so much more friendly than any 500 brake horsepower rear engine track monster has any right to be. This isn't the Ferrari form of 
driving flattery where you've got all manner of different driver aids and systems that make you feel like a hero. In this, it's way more natural. You've just got the brilliant control weights. You've got those little proportions. You've got the humps on either side of the bonnet that allow you to place the car exactly where you want and know what it's doing underneath you. It takes everything you've got as a driver, but it will make you feel like the ultimate hero. All you need to do is drive it. Just drive this car. Don't keep it in a garage away from the roads. Don't treat it like a priceless piece of Porsche history, which it is. Just give everything you have to it and it'll repay you more than even 10 year old you could ever have dreamed of. This car is so much better than you think it is. I wish you could be in this passenger seat now to hear, to feel and to see the way that it goes down. <laughs> this twisty road in Northern Wales because it is I don't think it gets much better than this of any generation of car. Oh my God. Switching back and forth from Cayman GT4 RS to 911 GT3 RS, it's easy to see where the last decade or so of automotive development has gone. Yet, for sheer excitement, there's little to choose between the two. Both cars feel like their engines have been manhandled into their taut body shells, yet somehow there's no feeling of imbalance or waywardness. Instead, it's just pure, unfiltered joy. But you know what's really great about both of these cars is that they were probably quite unnecessary. Porsche already had a very good 997 GT3. It was fantastic. They also had a very good Cayman GT4, but you know, why not go the extra mile? Why not build something which is damn near perfect? And in this case, especially in this case, that's what they did. Thank you. 